Project Helium Tears. I am the YouTube 9000 question aggregator. You will answer my questions. Okay, okay. How far away did it land? Um, it landed uh, approximately 50 miles away from our launch site in Cambridge in the UK, which is just north of London. Uh, and it landed in a small town village called Bozeet, which is near Northampton. We got it. We've got it. We found it. We found it. <laughs> Me? Sorry, pardon the blue language, but we found it. We found it. We got it. <laughs> There's the parachute. It's over there. <laughs> um, it also travelled 23 miles roughly up and 23 miles back down for obvious reasons. Um, we were very fortunate with the weather that day um, for it to go such a short distance. Um, if we launch today, thanks to the delightful weather, we probably end up in Belgium, Brussels, Holland, the sea. So, there you go. Did you get permission from the FAA? Yes, uh, the UK is looked after by the uh, Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA, and uh, they do permission 30 days before a launch, uh, uh, unless you're in certain places in the UK, uh, like Cambridge, where we launched from, where there is a three-day notice to Evan that we could get. Uh, up all the way up until we launch, we run predictions. Uh, those predictions let us know if we're going to go towards any towns, if we're going to land in the sea, if we're going to uh, go towards anything that might cause us any trouble. Uh, our second launch, which we had planned just before the Star Wars premiere, uh, unfortunately we had to cancel because right at the last minute the flight prediction took us across two airports. God, it's cold and windy. So, uh, 16 mile an hour. 16 That's mile an hour. Much. The winds decided to pick the worst possible angle for us. Yeah, it brings us right across that Stansted airport there, so we're sort of you know, three three runways length away, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's too close. Landing anywhere like that is a complete no-no. It's just, it's just not worth the risk. It probably would have gone nowhere near, but on the off chance something fell off or something, something uh, happened and the balloon landed early, it might have taken us within 20 or 30 miles of an airport. And it's just not worth the risk. It's just not worth it. How did you find it? We had the pie in the sky module uh, running throughout the flight, uh, which was transmitting uh, two frequencies down an FM transmitter which we could pick up from the ground. Um, that was sending us coordinates as to where it was. Um, we picked that up via a laptop, via an aerial in our chase vehicle. Um, we also had a GPS tracker, a small uh, GPS tracker with a SIM card in it, um, which you can text and it sends back its location. And I think that was eventually what we used to find it in the field. Yep. Doesn't space start at the Carmen line? Well, yes, technically space, as NASA and ESA would, would, would put it, does start at 100 kilometres and we only got to 36 kilometres. But it was black above, it was blue below, that was space enough for us and that's why we've carried on running space all the way through. And, and you know, maybe you don't agree with that as space, but if you don't agree with it as space, I dare you to put a camera somewhere higher than that. Which drone did you use to get to that height? Uh, we didn't use a drone. Um, it's a weather balloon. It's a Hui 1600 gram weather balloon made of latex, I think, and filled with about 100 quid's worth of helium. Why didn't you burn up on re-entry? Um, we didn't burn up on re-entry because we didn't make it into orbit. Uh, remember when... Um, you go when a rocket goes into orbit it blasts off and then it goes off at an angle gets up to 20,000 miles an hour um, and it basically falls off the edge of the earth and as it falls off the edge of the earth it carries on falling and falling and falling and that is being in orbit what we did was um, we just went up and then we went down again when um, when you're coming back out of orbit you kind of fire your thrusters to slow yourself down and then you come back in and you hit the atmosphere and, and you're still coming in at I don't know, 15,000 miles an hour. Uh, and that's when you get your big trail of fire and you basically, you slow yourself down to terminal velocity. What we did, we went up and we actually got faster as the air got less and less dense. And then the balloon popped and when the balloon popped, we actually slowed down to zero. And then after being at zero, we actually sped back up again to terminal velocity. So um, yeah, we didn't burn up because we never got anything like uh, orbital speed. We had height, we didn't have speed. What was that beautiful music? Uh, yeah, the music was actually uh, provided by a guy I found on the internet called Altus. 
I was listening to his album called uh, The Grand Expanse, uh, which is lovely kind of spacey music, and the track called Toward the Galactic Center seemed to fit our video very well. Why did you use a fisheye lens? Is it to hide that the Earth is flat? You're fucking flat earth, 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 flat earth. How can you hear sound if there's no air? And we we don't really know. Very good question. Um I mean technically there is still a bit of atmosphere up there, isn't there? About five percent atmosphere. Um what else could it be? Yeah, well I'm I'm my guess is that it's vibrations within the actual payload itself. I mean there was what ten meters of cord that we had between the the balloon and the parachute and the payload. So that flying around at hundred miles an hour has got to be vibrating and resonating and shaking everything slightly. So I'm I'm guessing when it all popped. Mm. My guess, and I don't know. We've never said we were clever. No, no, no. <laughs> Is it was there was a combination of vibration and the fact that there was five percent air pressure. So maybe what sound was there would have been very thin and weedy. So um, it's a good question. If you know the answer, give us a, give us a call, drop us a comment below, because um, we'd like to know ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did JJ send you the premiere tickets? No! <laughs> but, do you know what? We got to see the movie, anyway, it was great, and doing the project and running it through this course was where we had our fun, so it didn't matter too much. When are you going to launch again? I don't know, I wish, I wish I could tell you, I wish we had a date, but we've got Storm Gertrude blowing a gale overhead at the moment. Um, it just seems to be storm after storm at the moment. As soon as the weather calms down, we will launch. We've got a launch ready to go. It's all still sitting in the back of the field calm. Project Helium Tears. That is all for now. Do you have anything to add? Right, well, we hope that clears up a few bits for you. Yeah, keep sending us your questions, we enjoy answering them. Uh, I especially enjoy getting the questions from the uh, Flat Earth numpties. <laughs> you really are special. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully if the weather clears up soon, you'll be able to come with us again on our journey to space. Bye bye.